Hello and welcome back. We're on our final SAT review, surface area and volume. You're definitely going to need those formula sheets. Um, and number one, you have the formula right here. So all you're doing is substituting in R equals 4 and H equals 5 for the cylinder. Remember the radius is halfway across the circular top or the bottom. So the radius is halfway across, diameter is all the way across. And then the height is the height of that cylinder. So that's like the side of the soup can or the straw that goes down the middle. It's the height of that rectangle that wraps all the way around like a label. So if we do two pi and then radius of four squared plus two times pi times the radius of four times the height of five, you can just put all of that in your calculator and all of that in your calculator and then add them up and voila, that is gonna be your answer. So a lot of calculator work, you might wanna split screens with Desmos or have the calculator on your phone available. Um, TI-84 is what you're allowed to have on the SAT itself. You do not have Desmos. I want to make that perfectly clear. No Desmos on the SAT. Um, well, you know what? I'm not in preview mode. Let me put myself in preview mode here so we can see the whole questions. So that was number one. Number two is right here. So when you're talking about the volume of a 3D shape, that's the area of the base. So that's this base down here, the base times the height, or because in a uh, cube, the length and width and height are all the same, it can just be base length times width times height, or for a cube, we can just simplify it even more to the side cubed. So what is the volume? That's just going to be whatever 15 cubed is. My equation editor is broken. Schoology is not letting me put in any um, thing other than pictures. So anytime you see that carrot, that just means cubed. So put 15 cubed into your calculator. That's what I want to go right there. If I give you the, the volume is 64 cubed, so 64 centimeters cubed equals S cubed. We just need to take the cube root of that. That's a 64, by the way. I don't know why that won't write correctly. So in your calculator, do cube root of 64. If you're on a TI-84, you're going to do the math button, and then you'll get to that cube root and put in a 64. Okay? Okay. Go to number three. I like it when they start off easy. These are just plug and chug. All right. All right. So let's go here. And question number three. Got two boxes stacked on top of each other. I want to know the volume of the rectangular prism and the volume of the stacked boxes. So I need to find the volume of this top box and then the volume of the bottom box. So volume of length times width times height. So I need length times width times height. So I know the eight and I know this is six. So this must also be six. And if I know this is 10 and this is eight, then this must also be eight. So for my top box, I can do eight times six times three. So eight times six times three, eight, six, three for my top box. And then my bottom box is gonna be six, three, and 10. Six times three, times 10, oops, that's a 10. So whatever eight times six times three is, you get that number, and six times three times 10, you get that number, and then add those together, and that will be your final answer. Sometimes the trick is just cutting your things apart. That wasn't super tricky. It might get a little trickier later. Remember volume is always what's inside. Right, and that's in cubic, 
things and then um, volumes what's inside and surface area is what's on the outside. That's like the wrapping paper. So number four, we've got a couple of um, options here and we've got a Kind of be able to explain our answers in words down here, not just get a final answer. So if I am working at UPS or I'm moving my house, got a new house, got to move everything, pack all my stuff into these boxes. And I want to know how many of those boxes will fit inside that truck. So if I know this width dimension is 7.5, and I know this width dimension is 2.5, three of them will fit in there. So I can do three full stacks, right? And cut my truck in thirds that way. And then I know this dimension is 15 and this dimension is 2.5. So how many times does 2.5 go into 15? Hmm. 2.5 into 15, I think is six. So one, two, three, four, five, that's gonna be six pieces. So I'm just slicing my truck this way. If I think of it as a cake, I'm just cutting my cake, right? But then I also have some layers that I can put in there. So we've done length, we've done width, then we need to do height. So the height is also 2.5 and the height is also 7.5. So here, 7.5 divided by 2.5 is 7.5, or is three. So I can have three layers of boxes. So three layers of boxes that are three high and six long. So six by three by three is what my boxes could be. So I could do it that way. Six times three times three is gonna be your number of boxes. Another way to do it is to find the total volume. So the total volume would be 7.5 times 15 times 7.5 and then find the volume of each of these boxes, 2.5 cubed, and then divide those two numbers. So whatever this is divided by whatever this is should give you about the same. Now, is that gonna work every time? Probably not. These boxes fit exactly in three by three by six. But if this was just 2.0 or 2.2, .2, 2. something other than five, then we would lose some volume. So you just gotta be able to explain that. How do you fit all of those cubes in? How do you cube out that truck? So that there's no gaps, no spaces. You can fit as much as possible in there without having to um, make extra trips. Cause you know, if you've ever moved, you know extra trips in the truck is extra money, extra gas, extra aggravation, extra time on the clock. Cause usually they're charging by the hour kind of pain. All right, question number five. So we've got a cone and the cone has a radius of six. So radius of six. The cone is sliced horizontally so that the top piece is smaller. So I'm gonna redraw the smaller piece up here. That's the smaller piece. That's the total cone. So that the top piece is smaller, has a height of one. So I have H equals one over here, and the base radius is two, and R equals two. So H equals one, and R equals two. What is the height of the bottom piece of the cone? So if I have a height and a radius here, and I have a radius here, if I just think about these triangles here, I've got a height and a radius, and I've got a height and a radius, and I know that's a right angle. I know that this angle up at the top is going to be the same. So by angle, angle, these are similar triangles. So I can do 1 over 2 equals x over 6. When I cross multiply, 2x equals 6, or x equals, oops, there's supposed to be an equal sign in there, equals three. So if this total height is three, this total height is three, and I know this height is one, then this piece must be two, because the whole thing is three. Okay. So remind me again what the question was. What is the height of the bottom piece? And that's going to be your answer. 
It is all about answering the question being asked, not the height of the small cone, not the height of all of the cone, just the height of the bottom piece, which is the bigger piece. Question number six, the volume of a cylinder can be found. Conveniently, they give you the formula, volume equals pi r squared h. Find the volume of the cylinder below in meters cubed. Remember, that means meters cubed. My equation editor isn't working. So the hint says, did you find the radius? So when we go to do this, volume equals pi. We're tempted to put in the 34, but it says, what is the radius? The radius is half of that diameter. Diameter goes all the way across. Radius goes halfway across. So half of 34 is 17. And then, boom. Solve that, and you're done. Just make sure you round to the nearest tenth, and you got to multiply by pi. All in the calculator. Question number seven. Find the height. This should be of the cylinder below. Typos abound. Given the circumference is 10 pi. So if C equals 10 pi and C equals 2 pi r, right, circumference is 2 pi times the radius, then I can solve this by dividing by 2 pi and dividing by 2 pi. So 5 equals the radius. So radius is 5. And then I'm told the volume is 100 pi. So V equals 100 pi and volume is pi r squared. Divide by pi, remember from uh, change of attributes, if you've got the same thing on both sides, you don't need to worry about it. And then you take the square root of both sides to get rid of the two exponent. So R, R. pi r squared h. No, we are going to erase all of that because I didn't write the full formula. Did you catch me on that? Were you screaming, it's starting, it's starting, it's starting. You forgot. All right, let's try this again. V equals pi r squared h. V equals pi r squared h. So we've got 100 pi equals pi, and I just found my r, which is what I forgot, 5 squared h. So my pi's cancel out, 100 equals 25 h, divide by 25, divide by 25, and h equals 4. Boom. It's nice when you can recover from crazy mistakes, right? Make sure you write those whole formulas out. All right, the next to drawing, you got to kind of think through the drawing a little bit. That's sometimes what'll get you. It's just translating the question here. What is the volume of the hollowed out cylinder? So if you imagine this, this is a tube, right? We've got this tube. And then we take a drill and we drill out this whole inside part. This whole inside part here is drilled out and missing. It's hollow, okay? Like a toilet paper roll. It's kind of what it looks like. So we are told what is the volume of the hollowed out tube? So we need to find, I need to erase just a little bit of this so I can see my numbers. We need to find the total outside volume. So if this was solid, what would the volume be? Volume of the outside is going to be pi r squared h. And the r here is the 6, right? So v equals pi 6 squared, and the height is 10. Okay. And then we're going to drill out the center part. So if I drill out this center part, that blue part, it's going to be v equals pi r, which is 1, 1 squared, still times 10. Okay. So if we solve this, v equals 10 pi, we go back to our pink one, 
and V equals 36 times 10, 360 pi. And then we subtract them. So I start with this purple pink roll and I've got to subtract out 10 pi for that center. So what's left? The total minus the hollowed out part, the blue part equals the tube. And that's going to be your answer. So it's all about translating that question, the hollowed out cylinder is the key to that question. Number nine, Jane wants to wrap a rectangular box with wrapping paper. The, the box has a square base, okay? So square base is really important. We've got a square base. That was a weird way of drawing a, a cube. Mm. So if my base here is 25 and I know it's square, then each of the sides are five because five times five is 25 and that base is 25, okay? The volume of the box, so V equals the base times the height in this case. So I've got the base times the height. The base is 25, the height is what I don't know, and the volume is 100. That means the height has to be four. H equals four. How many square inches of wrapping paper will Jamie need to exactly cover all of the faces? So surface area is two LH plus two LW plus two WH. So I've got length, and width and height. So two times five times four plus two times five times five plus two times five times four. You do all that math, voila, correct answer. That square base is the super important part. Every prism can be written as base times height for volume. It doesn't matter, even a cylinder. The base is the circle, so that's the pi r squared, and then times the height. So it's always base times height. Jamie wants to wrap, oh, I just did that. What is the volume of a cube with a surface area? Okay, so now we've got, oh, I don't know what that did that. Strange. We've got surface area equals 24 a squared. So if we think about a cube, we've got six faces, bottom, side, top, side, back, and front, and all six sides are equal, okay? So if I know the surface area is 24, if I divide by six, that gives me the area of each side. So the area of each side is 4a squared. So if the area of the side is 4a squared, that means each side has got to be 2a, right? Because 2a times 2a is 4a squared. So then it says, what is the volume? Well, to find volume, we just do 2a times 2a times 2a. So 2a cubed, we've got to kind of distribute that exponent, right? So 2 cubed and a cubed. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So it's not going to be 4. It's not going to be 16. And then we definitely need volume. So we can't have the squared and we can't have the squared. So it's got to be c. 
sounds kind of crazy. You got to think that through. It's not super difficult once you understand what you need to think about. It's just kind of hard sometimes to think about. It's a cube. Why did they tell me it's a cube? Well, cubes have six sides that are exactly the same. Well, surface area, that means all six sides would be the same divided by six. Number 11, that crazy circle just keeps wanting to come back. A cylindrical water tank with a base radius of four. So I've got a cylindrical water tank with a base radius of four and a height of six, H equals six, can be filled in three hours. Okay. At that rate, how many hours will it take to fill a cylindrical tank with a base radius of six feet? So now we've got a bigger tank, R equals six, and a height of eight feet, H equals eight feet. All right, so what I would do is I'd find the volume first. So over here, V equals pi R squared. That's the base, that's the circular base, times the height. Right, so V equals pi 4 squared H, Oop, and H is 6. So I'm going to go to my cheat sheet. I think I have my cheat sheet in water. Mm -hmm. So I think that's 96 pi. V equals 96 pi. And that can be filled in three hours. So we're going to divide it by three, but we're just going to leave it like that as a, as a ratio. So over here, we've got V equals pi R squared H. So V equals pi times six squared times eight. So that's going to give me 288, 288 pi. And I want to know x hours. So I'm going to take this fraction and this fraction and set them equal to each other. So 288 divided by x, oops, don't forget the pi, equals 96 pi over 3. Remember, this is hours, right? So we can cross multiply here. We cross multiply and we cross multiply. Solve that proportion, you're going to have to round, okay? So you want to find which of those numbers is closest to the answer here. 288 times 3, because again, you've got pi on both sides, so the pi's are going to cancel out. So 288 times 3, 288 times 3 equals 96 times x. And then solve that equation. You'll have your answer. Tennis balls. I've been playing so much tennis with my daughter. It's great. Sometimes we bring the dogs, lock them in the tennis courts, let them run around. But then our balls get kind of slobbery. It's kind of gross, actually. So they have fun. We take them when we have bad balls. And we need to buy new ones. All right. Let's see what this tennis ball question has in store for us. I was thinking we were getting close to done, but I think we have 19 questions. And this is only number 12. Yikes. Here, we'll see if we can make this thing go away for real now. <laughs> Since it keeps coming back. All right. Cylinder in the shape of a right circular cylinder is shown. It's just large enough to fit three tennis balls exactly. Radius of two inches. So radius equals two. The container were emptied out and filled to the top with water. What would be the volume of water in cubic inches held by the, okay. So volume equals pi r squared h. We know the radius of the tennis ball, right? Radius of the tennis ball is two. So r is two. V equals pi 2 squared. We're going to figure out the height though. Oh, so the height is the diameter is going to be 4. 
diameter is going to be 4, diameter is going to be 4. So the height is going to be 3 fours or 12. Because you have pi in all your answer choices, you want to take it out here. Don't use it and then put it back into the answer choice. So whatever you get here, 2 squared is 4, 4 times 12 is 48, and then keep that pi. So 48 pi, I think, is going to be your answer. Hopefully you get that right, and you don't come to me and say, Miss Jordy, we did something wrong. Marching along, number 13. An aquarium. An aquarium has 80 inches by 25 inch base and a height of 30. So we're going to do 80 and 25 and 30. The aquarium is filled with water to a depth of 20 inches. Let's get some blue water. So 20 inches is like right here. So I'm putting water in there. Okay. A solid block with a volume of 5,000 cubic inches. Let's mm, make an orange block. So if I put in a block that's 5, thousand cubic inches and completely submerged how many inches of water hmm all right well there's a couple of things to do here so we can figure out how much water we have right so the water is 20 so volume of water is 20 times 80 times 25, right? So volume of water, I well, don't think I did it this way, so I'm gonna pick up my calculator. 20 times 80 times 25, it's gonna give me 40,000. Volume of water equals 40,000. And then we're adding the brick that's 5,000. So now that's 45,000. And I want to know how tall that made the water line, right? So 45,000 is my new volume. That's the water that we had plus the brick. And I know that that's length times width times height. I'm looking for the height. So 45,000 equals 80 times 25, because that's the 80 and the 25. I'm looking for the height times h. So 45,000 divided by 80 divided by 25 is going to give me the new height, which is the same, and it shouldn't be. So 45,000 divided by 80. Hmm. Keep pushing crazy stuff in my calculator. Got about 25. Ah, it does give us a new one. So, and this says, how many inches does the water level rise? So, the original was 20 inches and it rose to a new number. You need to subtract those. So, whatever you get for H, the answer here is going to be H minus 20 equals, and that's what you put in the blank. Okay, you get to solve this equation, solve it correctly. When I did it the first time, I thought, oh, that I didn't do that because I was just using the 40,000, not the 45,000. Try to remember to add that 5,000 in your calculator, not just on your paper. Hmm. You can see all my crazy open tabs. Actually, there's not very many right here. All right, 
14, a cube with side lengths of five inches. So we've got five by five by five by five. Okay. And it's painted black on all its sides. The entire cube is then cut into smaller cubes with sides of one inch. Okay. How many small cubes do not have any black paint on them? Hmm. All right, so I think if this is like a Rubik's cube, so this is like a five by five Rubik's cube, and we want to take off this front face, we want to take off this side face, we want to take off the back face, we want to take off the bottom face, we want to take off the back. We want to take off all of the edges. And the question is, what are we left with inside? So, oops, I forgot one. I'm going to take off that one too. So, on each of those edges, we're going to be left with a three by three if we started with a five by five, because we took one off the top, and one off the bottom, and one off the left, and one off the right. We did that over here too. We took off the top and the bottom, and we took off the left and the right. So we're left with nine, with nine, and then at the top, we're going to do the same thing. So this five by five by five turns into a three by three by three, and that is legit a Rubik's cube. So how many parts are there in a Rubik's cube? Well, that's three times three, times three. Anything you have because you started with a cube has to be a cubic number. So there's only one cubic number there and there's only one number that's three times three times three. Question number 15 is super similar. And I can almost guarantee you'll have at least one question like this on whatever version of the SAT you have. So that's what, one of the reasons I have so many Rubik's cubes in my room well, until they get broken and I get mad and I don't want to spend money to replace them, but that's a whole other story. All right, so if we talk about number 15, now it's a three by four by five. So that makes it a little bit different. It's three by four and then by five. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three. So this is three by five by four. It's all made up of one inch cubes. The outside surface is painted black. How many cubes left has exactly one face painted black? So if you can successfully draw this cube, all of these edges right, are going to have at least two, if not three, faces painted black. Everything on the inside is also going to have faces, no faces painted black. So on this three by five side, you're going to have one, two, three things that only have one thing painted. And on these two sides, you're going to have one, two things painted because you can't have anything on the edge. On the top, you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six things painted. So you're going to have three, nine, 10, 11, but you're going to have them on all sides. So 11 plus 11 is 22. The other way to think about that is to flatten it out. So if you look at the front, you've got a three by one, two, three, four, five. You've got one, two, three times two is going to give you six. And then you've got a three by four side. And that's going to give you one, two. So the first one we did was five by three. And then we did three by four. It's going to give you one, two, but you're going to have two of them, a right side and a left side. So that's going to be a total of four. And then you've got the five by four side. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Here you've got one, 
two, three, four, five, six. That's the top and the bottom. So that's going to be six on the top, six on the bottom. That's going to be 12. When you add all this together, you still get that 22. These are testing your visualization skills. So don't worry about it. If you're the algebra person that loves to solve equations and you just cannot visualize this in your head, that is absolutely fine. If you know this is a question you are not going to get right, do not waste a single second on it. Like I said, the SAT is a time to test. So you want to make sure you're getting the most bang for your buck from all of those minutes. Food manufacturer manufact packages ice cream cones. Yum. Each ice cream cone consists of a right cylinder. So a right cylinder, that volume is going to be one third pi r squared h, right? The base times the height and then one third because it's pointy. And a hemisphere. So that's four thirds pi r cubed but we only want half of that because it's like a half a sphere, hemisphere. The right circular cone has a base of nine, base radius of nine. So R equals nine and a slant height, uh-oh, a slant height of 15. So we wanna know that actual height, right? You see that's a right triangle. So if the right triangle, if R equals nine and S equals 15, I wanna know the other leg. This S is the hypotenuse. So nine squared plus H squared equals 15 squared. When you solve that down, 81 plus H squared equals 225. And then h squared equals whatever it is. And then you got to take the square root, right? So then you get the height. Once you have the height, then you can substitute in here. So 1 half times 4 thirds times pi times your radius, which was 9 cubed. Find all that and then add it to 1 third pi times nine squared times your height that you got over here. Don't forget to um, take the square root. And that is gonna give you your answer. Oh, there's pi in the answer though, right? So when you're multiplying, don't multiply the pi and don't multiply the pi, right? You're gonna put one divided by two times four divided by three times nine cubed and get that number. And then one divided by three times nine squared times your height and get that number because you've got all these pies in your answer right here. And I know that can be confusing, but those pies are there because my equation editor doesn't work. I don't know what the heck is wrong with Schoology. I feel like I've erased this about six times. Ooh, we might be coming to the last question or two. That's so exciting. All right, question number 17. A crate has an exterior dimensions that are 10 by eight by three. Hmm. Okay, so 10 by eight by three. 10, eight, and three. The Floor and walls are each one inch thick. Ah, so how many one inch blocks will fit inside the crate? So I don't really care about how big it is on the outside. I wanna know what can fit on the inside. So if the walls are each one inch thick, instead of being 10 by eight, it's really gonna be eight by six. And because it doesn't have a top, it's just going down and it's got a bottom, so that's going to be two. So the whole outside is three by eight by 10, but the inside is two by eight by six. So in order to find the space for the cubes inside the box, we need to do two times eight times eight. 
from six. And unless you've built something, that might come as a weird uh, thing for you, but you'll know if you've built anything, you have to take into account the thickness of whatever you're building with in order to make your cuts right. All right, number 18, we've got a staircase. I remember this one being kind of weird. The concrete staircase shown below is a form of a rectangular. It has a base of five meters long. That's the run. I see the word run here, so I'm going to label that five. And six meters wide. I don't see a wide, so this must be the six. Three steps have equal dimensions, and each one has a rise of 0.2 meters, so 0 0.2 and 0 0.2 and 0 0.2, okay? Um, if the density of the concrete density equals 130 kilograms per means divide meter cubed, what is the mass of concrete of the staircase in kilograms? Okay, so we need to find total volume. Usually I try to cut these into pieces. So I think I'm gonna cut them into pieces this way, like a layer cake, okay? So this bottom layer is six by five by 0 0.2. So six times five times 0 0.2. That's the bottom layer. And then that five is actually divided into three pieces. So this one is going to be six by two thirds pot two thirds five so six times two thirds of five times zero point two that's the middle right so because if I divide this by into thirds right here that's two of those thirds and then my top up here is six times one third times five times 0 0.2, that's the top, right? So if I multiply all that out and I add it all up, I should get one, two, three, four, five, six, six times 10 times 0 0.2. So that's 60 times 0 0.2, 60 times 0 0.2. Is that 12? I think that might be 12. It is. So 12 meters cubed is I think what I get there. So if the ratio of density is 130 kilograms per one meter cubed, and I have 12 meters cubed, I wanna know what the density is. So we're gonna to have to cross multiply and that seems like a very large number. But I guess it would be, if those were made out of solid cement, that would be a large number. So the total volume is gonna be 12 meters squared and then the total weight is gonna be 130 times 12, boom. Last question, I hope it's an easy one. Hope you guys fast forward through all this erasing. Maybe you're writing notes, maybe you're dual screen and just answering the question in Synergy or Schoology, I don't know. All right. I think that might have to be good enough. 
In the figure below, a cylindrical block of wood is sliced into two pieces as shown. So when you slice something like that, it looks like it should be cut in half, I think. What is the volume of the top piece? So that's just the top half in centimeters if the radius, so volume of a cylinder is the base, pi r squared times the height. The radius is two, so pi times two squared and the height is five. Oh, so pi four times five, so 20 pi, and then we've sliced it in half. So if we had 20 pi, we sliced it in half. Boom, that's our answer. The end.